Hey, what's up? So today I'm going to be showing you how I prepare my agar agar. Um, so real quick, I got uh, quite a few of these um, media bottles. They are 500 milliliters. Uh, I got a four pack off Amazon for like $25. Um, for anybody that is wondering, um, I use this brand of agar agar. Um, I think most brands are okay. I know a lot of people have great things to say about telephone brand agar, but um, at like 20 bucks for a pound, um, can't really beat that. You know, is it really necessary to spend like eight dollars or whatever for a four ounce pack like nah i don't think so so um i like my agar a little on the thicker side so what i do is i measure fuck well that's not good i forgot to tear my scale I like my agar a little bit on the thicker side, so um, I do 10 grams agar agar with about 9 grams malt extract, and I fill it only up to 400 milliliters. Um, I know a lot of people like to do 10, 10, 500, but I don't know. I think it's, it's, it's a little too runny for me. When I try to cut it with my scalpel and I pick up a transfer, it, like, it just, it doesn't, like, pop up. It seems really slimy. So, yeah. And I'd say 800 milliliters gets me about 30 Petri dishes. Um, with 500 milliliters, you typically would get about 20 Petri dishes, if you did it correctly. So we got all the agar in there. Next up is the malt. Um, just a heads up, if you've never done this before, if you do get malt extract, um, it is very absorbent. And it will absorb the heck out of the moisture in the air. Um, it likes to cling to things. So uh, when I bought my agar, or I mean when I buy my malt, it usually comes in a bag or a pouch. And I always immediately put it in a mason jar and it keeps it dry and fresh. If you have um, a silica packet or in any sort of like uh, food grade... Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Desiccate. Uh, I would advise putting that maybe in there. You know, keep it nice and powdery and fluffy. And for those who um, don't like the hassle of making agar petri dishes, or if you just feel like you have bad luck and all your plates come out contaminated, you could always visit my website at altheamushrooms.com. I will provide a link. Um, I sell pre-made agar petri dishes um i think my prices right now is uh 10 for 11 dollars 20 for 21 dollars or um 50 for 51 dollars and then i also uh do flat rate shipping ten dollars anywhere in the u.s no matter how big your order is um i use ups ground so you don't have to worry about your packages 
getting lost by the U.S. Postal Service. Um, and then there's always tracking. I will be making a video on how to make P, uh, PDA, which is potato dextrose agar. And I'll also be doing uh, a video on on yeast uh, agar. Um, Maybe I'll do like a time lapse or like a, like a month long, yeah, a month long, maybe like a two, two week long video blog on comparisons. Like I'll use the same culture cloned from the same mushroom and, uh, grow it out on agar, like normal MEA agar, and then take a transfer. And then I'll put the transfer. Uh, I'll put a transfer on like an MEA plate, an MEYA plate, a PDA plate, and a PDYA plate, and see what the uh, results look like. You know, and sometimes I use uh, sometimes I use bottled water. Sometimes I use tap water. I don't think it really matters. It's all going into the pressure cooker. Um, our water is a little bit harder out here. Uh, so we do get calcium stains like on the glass and stuff. But like as far as uh, like how it reacts with the mycelium, it's, it's not bad. I, I can't really tell the difference. Okay, so next up, we will cap this. So what I like to do is I turn and twist the lid all the way on, and then I give it a slight untwist back. Obviously you wanna mix it up first. Load them up like so. So a real common um, situation people run into when pressure cooking agar is that um, the agar inside has the tendency to boil over and seep out of the bottles into the pressure cook water, um, which is kind of annoying sometimes. You'll pull it out and the level would be like down to 300. So you like you lost 100 milliliters worth of agar solution within the pressure cook water. Uh, I learned this from Bod's Agar Tech. I found on shroomery.org, um, which suggests to uh, 
lower the risk of boiling over, bring the water level up to the, the liquid line within the media bottles. So that's my little tip slash trick for the day. Um, so we will get this started by turning the oven on or the stove full blast. Um, yeah, wait for it to heat up a little bit, throw the lid on and pressure cook for about 20 minutes. Now for the fun part. First thing we do is spray some isopropyl alcohol. Um, all over the arms. Get some gloves on. First we start by prepping this. My preferred way of doing this is making sure that all the petri dishes are faced upside down. And do one of these little motions. Well, that was almost very bad. So I like to have stacks of 15. Um, I didn't always start out with stacks of 15. I used to start out with just stacks of 10. Um, for those who haven't poured before, this is the quickest and most efficient way of doing things. Um, this is also the safest in terms of uh, risk of contamination. Also, for those that don't know, agar has to be poured in a certain uh, temperature range, which I believe is 107 to 117 Fahrenheit. Um, sometimes I pour a little hotter than that or yeah a little hotter than that sometimes i'll go as hot as i don't know like 120 130 um just because i have to do so many at once Let's see so i just lift up a pour set it down go to the next one up lift up pour and it just start speeding things up Went a little too high with that one. It's been a while since I poured. It's been about a week or two. I would normally pour like 200 plates in one sitting. And I'd pour like every other day. But after a couple of months of it, it got really old. Um,
Yeah, so if you pour too hot, you'll run into condensation issues. If you pour too cold, things will get chunky. Push this over here towards the corner. And on to the next one. This takes a little practice, you know. Um, I used to always think that plates were poured one by one, like not stacked. <clears throat> that would just take way too long. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh. Oh, those are trash. That's okay. And like with working in an SAB, like it does get a little foggy in there. Take some practice getting used to seeing through flogged glass. It is what it is, so you know we, we make the best of what we can. You know what? These didn't open. These might be still good. Normally I would uh, pitch these out, but you know what? We'll do a, a, a week long little test. <clears throat> what do you call it? A static control test. That's my daughter in the background. Her name is Vivian. She is only a month and a few days old. Oh no, that was going to be bad. Do not do that at home. Very, very bad. Jesus, I don't know what's up with me today. Like I was saying before, you just want to go quick as possible. You know, you're trying to beat the time. You're trying to hurry up before all your media bottles solidify. You're trying to reduce the, the risks of any sorts of contamination.
Did she just throw that? Yeah. Yeah, her one month old daughter has the the arm of Justin Verlander. See, and this is why you want to be fast. We got some chunkiness going on. So this bottle might actually be hit. We'll see. You start getting clumps. And sometimes the clumps will surprise you. You'll be almost done pouring a, a Petri's worth and then a clump will come out. And the next thing you know, you have an almost overflowing Petri dish. I'm not exactly, uh, uh, gotta be careful. <clears throat> I do, however, have a lab grade digital water hat bath, which does make things uh, pretty awesome. <clears throat> it means you get to take your time a little bit. Um, and when I mean take your time a little bit, I mean taking time in between pouring media bottles. I'm not taking time pouring a media bottle. Like, sure, we're, we're, we're working within a sterile environment. But it's, it's not 100% sterile, you know, it's, it's, it's sterile to the best of our abilities. You know, the longer the lid of this media bottle stays open, that's more opportunity for, for bacteria and competing molds and funguses, um, and yeast, like, to to swoop in and contaminate your, your media. <clears throat> All right, so we're almost done here. right there and personally that's why I do like to pour at higher temperatures despite the condensation you know I I, I sell Petri's on on Etsy and 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 you know of course I can't sell my my normal customers you know plates filled with condensation or bubbles or chunks like I'm getting pouring out of these too slow but like i what i do is i i keep all my stuff aside for i don't know at least two weeks eh, two weeks is pushing it i i started out doing two weeks but i actually i hold them aside for at least a week um they usually say about 72 hours um if you don't see contamination in your newly poured plates within 72 hours it's a, it's a general good rule of thumb that, that they'll be okay. But I have um, bumped into some scenarios where it's been past 72 hours and I'm running into cross-contamination or, or contamination in general, whether it be yeast or trichoderma. Um, let's see if I can flip this over. Uh, but yeah, like, um, which is, which is really not that, that something that we want. So I, I keep mine 
up to about a week after pouring before I, I list them for sale on Etsy or Sport Swaps or eBay or my website, AltheaMushrooms.com. Um, I do have a particular customer that, that does buy from me every now and again, maybe once every other month. Uh, he orders about uh, 50 in quantity, um, but he he's asked that I hold them for at least two weeks. Um, my first month starting out, I did run into a situation because, uh, so I have been experimenting growing with new gourmet uh, species of mushrooms and oysters was one that I haven't grown yet. At this point, you know, I've grown cubes like almost a decade ago, you know, and I, I heard cubes were the easiest to grow, and and I I was realizing that there's a lot more to to the mushroom world, uh, especially uh, in cultivation than just growing cubes. You know, like yeah, you can you, you can grow cubes for so long, but like you know, I got a daughter now. Like I I can't I can't be just like doing that. You know, it's not even about the legalities. It's just I don't know. It, it gets old. It gets boring. Uh, so my first gourmet, uh, species that I've grown was, was the reishi mushroom, uh, Ganoderma lucidium, uh, to be exact. And, uh, it was very easy. The culture I got very aggressive. It would colonize an entire plate in less than a week, I think, eh, a week tops. And it would colonize, uh, a bag of grains in not that long like I could put 10 wedges into 10 quart jars and a quart jar would be fully colonized within a week um, and then I would put a quart jar into a five pound bag of of hardwood fuel pellets not supplemented just you know hickory smoke chips and it would colonize a five pound bag of that within a week so like three weeks from uh, culture to agar, agar to grain, grain to, to sawdust. Uh, yeah, three weeks tops to colonize that. But, you know, the, the antlers took a very long time to grow. Uh, so, so I got a little experience under my, my belt. And so the next thing I moved on to was oysters. And I was growing what I thought was King Trumpet oyster. Uh, and it turned out to be... I don't know, just some generic everyday oyster mushroom, probably like Pleurotus, Ostritus, um, just ma mislabeled. I, I traded from somebody online. I can't remember where, probably like Shroomery or Reddit or something, but this dude was like, yeah, I'll hook you up. And I can't really complain. You know, free mushroom cultures is free mushroom cultures. I'll take what I can get. But I, I tried growing these uh, oysters, these uh, king trumpets, and they turned out to be regular oysters. And uh, for those that don't know, the spore load on oysters is insane. And um, I was growing inside my living room. We didn't really have, we just got this place. Uh, it's a rental. And I, I try real hard to avoid any modifications to to the, the land or the house here. You know, it doesn't really belong to us. We're, you know. So I, I got a Martha, like a $30 Martha from Amazon. And not modified or anything. No, no humidifier. Um, I was just going in, hand spraying, fanning every now and again. I uh, just used normal... Uh, around the house lighting um we, we live on pretty much like a 12 12 schedule anyways uh you know between work and not being at home and then finally getting home and then settling down it's about 12 12 so that's fine um and i did hear rumors that the spore load on oysters were pretty heavy um but i was like you know nothing to really worry about i'm just, i just got like two five pound bags like what the fuck's that gonna do? And so I spent an entire week where I was pouring plates in the SAB. Um, we had a baby on the way. So my old lab, we had to break it down, turn it into the baby's room. And it's like, well, where do I put my SAB? You know, I, I really didn't want to like do it in my living room. 
just because it's like big open space you can't really close vents off and it was like middle of the summer so i'd have to turn off the air conditioning for you know a few hours and you know by the end of it it's like hitting 90, 90 degrees in the house which is not really that great and um you know so i don't know i ship off a uh you know, a few hundred agar plates, uh, what, like $20 piece, or 20 piece here at Reddit, 30 piece here at Etsy, 20 piece here at Facebook Marketplace, 20, you know, just like, t uh, increments of 10 to 50 plates per customer, about, you know, three, 400 plates worth of orders, and I am getting text messages left and right hey my stuff's contaminated uh you know or or rookies that have never touched agar before they just got recommended to it off uh, through a facebook group hey go go try out agar this is the way to go don't go sport grain so they come to me to get this then they start taking pictures of it and sending it to me and they're like hey is this normal and comes to find out uh uh, somehow I severely contaminated my entire living room and workspace in oyster, uh, spores. And, and, and it was just insane, like, how bad it was. Like, I would, you know, uh, dawn dish soap and hot water scrub out the inside of my SAV. And then I would, you know, uh, Lysol, lemon, bleach spray, bam, 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 wipe it down. Then I'd ISO everything, you know, lice all the, all the whole living room and, you know, come back to it 10 minutes later, you know, do the whole routine. And um, it was really funny because, like, I set some plates uh, off to the side for me, for myself, and I actually have a pretty large culture database. I, I probably have, like, over 100 of fully colonized cultures, like, of all sorts, you know, and... And, uh, you know, I, I'm pretty disorganized sometimes. Uh, I will work on a culture. I'll plan to work with a culture and I'll set it aside, like, next to the SAB. Uh, and also next to the stack of, like, unused, uh, already to, ready to go agar dishes. And, um, I, I swore, like, I put my culture and then, like, a stack of five dishes and then I come back to it the next day or next couple of days and like I see like a lot of growth, like a lot of aggressive growth just like spanning out and it looked like high healthy mycelium. It didn't look like, you know, pre-sporulated trichoderma. It didn't, you know, it, it wasn't like your typical bacteria. I'm like, did I just like accidentally like leave some other cultures here and like not label them like I always label everything I, my my labeling convention my numbering scheme is like fucking wild out this world I think I, I do a lot more with with labeling things in than most people do and so that's why it, it was a, a big surprise to me to just find like a stack of five petri dishes fully colonized with something <laughs> and it turns out that it was it was the oyster that that got a hold of all the petri dishes i poured and stuff and you know i did hit these people up that that bought my petri dishes and i'm like hey i think that's uh actually oyster um luckily it's not bacterial contamination whatever um but you know that isn't what you ordered so you know keep that if if you have some extra grain you can fuck around with, throw it in there, fruit it, you know, free oysters. But um I will, you know, send that right out. But Yeah, uh well that is all I got. So peace. Hopefully uh you, you found that all to be pretty useful. And so yeah, you are ready to go for plates. <laughs>